So the wife and I decided to make uh, Florida our permanent residence. Um, rest assured, I'm going to keep a property in South Carolina, at least for the time being, so I'll still be Yankee in SC if you're concerned about that. My initial motivation to vlog my experience about paragliding was because I did not like the business model that was so prevalent 19, 18 months ago. I think we've made tremendous inroads in accountability from the people selling gear and training to a real expose of some of the turkeys out there that are bashing each other's gear and claiming if you don't get training from them that you're going to die. Hey! It's recording. Hey! Ripper. All right, so I'm going to get all this junk. Go down here to the beach. Thanks to Eric. Appreciate it, Eric. Yeah, Eric's, uh, Eric's the man. Thanks to Eric Cote of uh, Paradise PPG, I got an opportunity to test fly the Mac Para Colorado. It's uh, the newest product on their uh, palette of uh, paraglider wings, and I liked it a lot. It solves some of the basic problems that I have with the charger, and that is the, the dissimilarity between the rate of change that you can affect with pitch versus the rate of change you can affect with roll. So the Colorado addresses that. It's a 2D steering system. Its roll rate is significantly snappier than the uh, charger. And no disappointment with the charger. It was good wing to learn on, but I didn't need the protections of roll. I felt that the charger has built into it at the expense of speed and drag. It's just, just too much uh, stability built into the wing to do some of the stuff you see other guys doing pretty early on in their flying experience. So once, once I got my head around the price, I ordered the uh, Colorado, and I should have my hands on it in four to five weeks. We're waiting to see if there's a shipment coming in. Uh, once it clears customs, there might be a wing that meets my uh, requested size and color scheme. I'm also stepping down three meters in size, and that's definitely part of why the wing rolls better for me. It's significantly smaller than the Charger. But the combination of that with the 2D steering system, and uh, it's particularly snappy in uh, all axes, and I uh, can't wait to get more familiar with it and fly my own version instead of the demo model. He's got all his... I'd like to park right here. Put my truck back up to that gate. And just launch right off of here. Pull up, you can run down the pier. I also got a cool new 360 camera as a gift. So will this thing edit my arm out? No, it has to be straight out the bottom. So it's got to come straight out this way. I only have that 8, eight gig card. I haven't bought another card yet. So. How do I know to get that? Called some idiot that had one. If you follow any of my other postings, you may have also seen that I, uh, I had a ridiculously self-induced motor contact to the ground and busted my tank and propeller. I've got that fixed. That was pretty stupid. You know, part of it has to do with the fact that I'd been flying off the beach a lot since I uh, showed up here in Florida. And man, the beach flying is just so easy because you always have a six, seven, eight knot uh, laminar flow breeze. And all of a sudden you take that away and you put yourself in a difficult situation and uh, humidity, low winds or no winds, and you forget some of the basics. And I paid for it dearly. Fortunately, I was not hurt. Things back together now and uh, <clears throat> I've flown five or six times since that incident. In the past month or so, I've uh, helped a couple guys out with uh, gaps in their training where they had flown previously and uh, or hadn't flown in a long time or were having some issues. So I had mentioned Jim way back at the beginning of my attempt to vlog about uh, paragliding and he had approached me asking for help. Well, I didn't feel qualified or competent to help him. I still don't really because he flies a uh, Green Eagle quad, but I understand the paraglider side of it now quite well. And Jim doesn't need training from me. Jim needed 
Jim needed some hand-holding. He needed some reassurance. He's been through training twice. He bought training from the manufacturer, and then he got back to the Carolinas, and he had some time lapse and bought additional instruction from Brian Goff. And both of those guys helped him, but flying is a long term embrace process. It doesn't happen overnight. You forget things. It's possible one instructor didn't cover things. So we got Jim reacquainted with uh, some of the basics and we got him flying safely and here's the video footage. Jim is setting up his Green Eagle. Shadows are still long but drive out here takes a while so we're just now getting set up. Well, here's what my morning has been filled with. Bunch of attempts with the Green Eagle and Jim, dead calm winds. We just now started getting a little bit of a breeze and it's almost 9.30, getting almost to be too late here. Good inflation, right brake, right brake. Steer, 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 good inflation, everything looks good. Add power, stay on that power. Stay on that power until you're well clear of the trees. Jim is looking nice and stable. Nice and stable. I think he's going to start a long, slow left turn here for the runway. There's a paraglider in the pattern at the Edgefield Airport. So Jim's coming over the trees. We got uh, Piper traffic over there. Not sure what his plan is. And Jim is coming in on the shortened runway. Looks like he's got a pretty good glide established. He's got good ground track. Looking real stable. Stay off of those brakes. Looking nice, Jim. Stay off those brakes till the last minute. Nice, very nice. Jim has landed. I really enjoyed seeing him get airborne again because his gear has been sitting around for almost a year and he enjoys it. He, he's doing this for the same reason the rest of us are. He loves it. Now, Philip, on the other hand, had gotten in touch with me, and you may have seen this video previously of uh, a less than perfect takeoff. Been there, done that myself, although not quite like Philip did. And here's Philip after some discussion. So, Philip and I had some discussions about rectifying the direction that he's running with the direction that the wing is flying. We've got an east wind this morning which changes this field completely. It's significantly safer, none of the rotor, and he's gonna make a nice takeoff right here. From a pilot development standpoint, Philip has a lot of things that he hasn't been exposed to because Philip chose with no motivation from me to self-train. And he had already been flying before we, uh, well, when we met, he had acquired gear. And between the time when I met him and the next time that I talked to him, he went out and flew five or six times. I didn't encourage him to do that. In fact, I encouraged the opposite. It's the path that he chose. Having done it, I don't advocate it. I don't necessarily agree with it, especially for somebody who doesn't have previous aviation experience. It's gonna take a long time to help Philip understand some of the 
finer points of flying a paraglider or flying anything, but he's well on his way. His wing is pretty fast because I'm trimmed out on the big news and I'm just barely overtaken. Now I want to take it to the next step. I have had a lot of people contact me. I'm going to help them solve their problems. I'm going to show what it was they came to me in video format. I'm going to show you the discussions that we had to take them from a misunderstanding to more of an understanding of the basics or of what it was they're not doing right. We're going to use video analysis. We're going to use ground instruction and I think that if there's a thing that's sadly lacking from the people providing training. It's sitting down with students and ensuring that they fully understand some of the concepts behind what needs to be understood to fly one of these things. They're giving them the training, they're not giving them the solid basis of understanding of the things involved. And then as a final step, you'll see the results of these discussions. For the in-depth analysis portion of some of this, I am considering putting the discussion portion, the education portion, behind a pay-per-view wall or behind Patreon. That's going to be the path that I choose going forward. Um, I've already got a couple guys lined up that can't find instructors elsewhere. They're not willing or able to travel. They've got issues. They've had incidents. They've broken gear, and they need help. And I'm not going to sit idly by and watch them get injured or hurt themselves or continue to destroy gear. I'm going to go out and help them to the best that I can. I also don't expect them to pay me a thousand or fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars to work with them for an afternoon or two. I expect you, the viewer, to say, hey, this is my situation too. I'm willing to sit in on this discussion for a dollar or two dollars, depending on the content. So that's the direction we're going to be heading in the future. There's plenty to work with here, and I think that the Tucker Got effect is wearing off. We're no longer seeing people flocking to go flying. They're flocking to buy training and gear. They get reasonably proficient. They're able to get around the pattern a few times with their instructor. They get home, they scare themselves, the gear goes into storage. You mark my words, in three or four years you will be able to pick up tons and tons of used paraglider gear that was sold during the, we'll call it the Tucker Got Effect years. No offense to Tucker, he's doing a great job representing the community and showing how fun it is, but I think it may be slightly oversold and I think that going forward there's going to be a lot of people that just can't do it on their own. They can't do it without help. They can't do it from the property that they thought they were going to. They run into resistance at the local level, legislative. They may get in trouble. They, they have babies and kids. Their life goes on and work. They can't get out and paraglide their equipment's up for sale used. So here's Philip on short final. Winds are east, northeast. He's got a little bit of rotor here from these trees. He looks a little high. He's motor off, he's committed. Hands up to the last second. Ease in that flare, pull hard, pull hard, pull hard. Very nice. And no turtle, runs it out, spins it around. Very nice.
And this is what I mean about pilot development. I was unfamiliar with this field. This wasn't about showing off. It was about self-preservation in the event of an engine failure. I could spiral back down and land where I'd taken off from, even if it was downwind. So upcoming events, I plan on attending the Moonshiner Fly-In in, in uh, Tennessee the first weekend of August. And immediately on the heels of that, I'm planning on attending Jeff Pearson's Fly-In at Rebel Field in North Carolina. So I'll take a couple weeks off and spend uh, Labor Day at home in South Carolina and uh, Indy Air Hogs will be the next big event that I plan to get out. And then Mr. Ripa, Rip Man Riding, and I are going to take a ridge soaring course from Granger Banks, and that's the first full week of October. And we are looking forward to that. Acquiring gear, planning the trip, it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's my travel itinerary. If you're at one of those events and you want to say hi, uh, please find me and uh, we'll get together and talk a little bit. Appreciate your viewership. And if you become a Patreon supporter or a pay-per-view uh, event buyer, once I start creating that content, I thank you in advance.